Finally got the wire harness completed, stripped out all the sensors I don't need, and then removed the original harness so that I could label off the wires that go inside the dash separately. Starter wire, fan wires. I'm gonna reuse the fan and possibly the radiator from the Camaro. Everything should stay nice and cool. I reused the fuse box as well. Got all the fan and starter relays in there as well as main circuit fuses. So that's done. Real easy to do. I think uh, most of it was on lt1swap.com and then a few other forums with pictures here and there just to give you an idea. Just strip out what you don't need. Tape it back up. As long as you don't mangle it too much, it stays in its general shape. Have the motor mounts coming in the mail. Head gaskets coming as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the head gasket, intake manifold gasket, all the other valve cover gaskets, just anything that could potentially leak or fail after I get it in the car. This motor only has 124,000 on it, so not too detrimental, but I'd rather do it now while it's out on the stand. Have to get the Holly 302-1 classic GM oil pan. So I've got the oil pan off. That requires the LS3 oil dipstick tube and oil dipstick. So that's coming with a new oil pan gasket, pickup tube, and windage tray. Next, I have to find some way to move the alternator from way down here to up here where the power steering was. I'm going no power steering, no AC. I may add the AC compressor later on to power the air ride system and a train horn, but for now it's gonna be just the alternator up here. And there are tons and tons of different brackets and adapters and all kinds of stuff, steel, aluminum. It's just endless how many options there are to move the alternator either up here or over there. And they're all over 200 bucks. I think the cheap I found was like 119 bucks but it puts it way up high and you got to get a different tensioner and it ends up being about $150 but I saw a forum last night where a guy basically gets another one of these ribbed pulleys and you put it right here and then this bracket can be modified to mount up here. This is the top driver side. It's upside down right now, but it can be mounted up here just outside the valve cover. So you still have clearance for all your coils and everything. It's because of the fact that this is the F body setup with my water pump and my pulley. The block and the valve cover are flush. So all I gotta do is remove this bracket and transfer these three bolt locations with the bracket to up here and then another bracket gets bolted in here that runs over to the third bolt hole. And that will essentially put the alternator out here so that I can clear the cross member on the Bel Air because the alternator sitting down here, it actually hits the cross member and it won't allow the motor to go in without either chopping or hammering the cross member down to clear the alternator, but I'm afraid one of two things, either the alternator is not gonna be able to be removed if it were to fail without pulling the motor. And also this motor mount is a pain in the ass to get to with the alternator in place. So I'm thinking even if I were to make a dent in the cross member, this is either gonna get in the way of me pulling the motor 
to remove the alternator or pulling the alternator without removing the motor. So it's kind of like I'd be painting myself into a corner. Might not even be able to get the motor mount in with the alternator in place. All right, so for this to work, you literally just move the bracket for the alternator up to here. Take the shorter bolt, put it in here. It'll swivel. Then you can get it as close as possible to the coil pack bracket without hitting. So you still have room for a nut and a bolt. And then you notch this out. The thickness of your adapter plate that you need to make, anything will do. The thicker the better, aluminum or steel. I lightweight in mine because it's steel and then painted it silver. So that's what we have. And then that will connect from right here on the top of the block next to the valve cover over to the part that you notched, the shorter leg on the inside. So now we have a bracket installed. The alternator is mounted. You can see the amount of clearance you have between the coil bracket and the nut. And there you go. I just got to get another ribbed pulley like this to go here. And then uh, it's pretty much all done. So the parts are in the mail. I should see them sometime this week. Next video will be the head gaskets, valve cover gaskets, intake manifold gaskets, and new head bolts. So like if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, keep on modding. Oh, 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 oh,